Hello and welcome to All The Pies. My name's Sai, that is Kev. And this is a special, you see at the top with the titles there, We Are The Jodies. This was the Newcastle United documentary movie that was um, long before the Amazon one that's about to come out. Um, and we have got one of its creators joining us uh, to talk about it, to talk about what it was like, to talk about uh, how it was being uh, the Amazon documentary before the day during the Rafa season where we got up. Can you remember that season, Kev? I can't remember that season. It was actually a really good season, wasn't it? It was, it, we went from having it where, you know, just, say, yeah, just to say yes, because I haven't done it yet. Just say yes. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> scored so many goals. <laughs> so all you had to do was yes. <laughs> I'm a chatterbox, Simon. I'm a chatterbox. Yeah, you were. You were. Um, how, are you? how are you anyways, Yari? I'm fine. I'm fine. But I've um, got a guest waiting, so I think we should get them straight in. Um, oh, yeah, let's get her in now. Are, are you ready though, Kev? You ready for this? Well, oh, I'm ready. What I'm doing. Are you really ready? I'm ready. Are you fucking ready? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Ari Zora. How are we doing? Ari, not bad. How's you? I'm canny. Canny for a lass. You know, the weather's shite, but apart from that, yeah. all good. Excellent. Well, um, for those who don't know you, um, I know you, uh, you are a filmmaker uh, and well, I'll, let, I'll let you introduce yourself and say a little bit about yourself um, and about your company, FNA Films, and uh, yeah, just do a little introduction, a nice little bite-sized piece to introduce the viewers to who you are and what your crack is. Uh, I'm Zara, I'm a gobby brown bird from Gateshead. Um, I make comedy stuff um, and accidentally in 2016 started making a documentary about Rafa Benitez at Newcastle United and Newcastle United supporters. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. And we've got, the, as you can see in the poster behind, um, I've got a copy here, which you can't see at all unless I put it right there. Um, <laughs> we are the Jordies. Um So how did it come about? Because well, well, obviously... At that period, we're trying to block it out of our heads. Um, did you start like when when Rafa came just before we got relegated, or did you start um, that championship season? What was the crack? It was, was well, if you if you like you specifically, mm -hmm. Sai, remember in the olden days we made another film called The Stag Do poster do. there, and it. that was yes, you were in it, and that was always supposed to be the prequel to a film called uh, Pissheads. So I'd gone to London to try and drum up some interest for Pissheads and uh, came up with this idea for a documentary that everybody who I was talking to in London about Pissheads uh, was getting really excited about. And so, yeah, Pissheads got parked and this took over my life for the next however many years. But it was literally like, two weeks to the day between having the idea and interviewing Rafa in the training ground. Like, literally yeah. two weeks to the day. That's how quick everything turned around. So you so said, was, you it said, end, so was it at the end of the, the Premier League season where we got relegated? Yeah, well, it was the... So if, if you remember, he, we got relegated, then we beat Spurs, like, we last Spurs. game of the I season. That, yeah, yeah. And then... We, is he going to stay? Is he going to go? There was that whole conversation. And then it was like, I think it was the very end of May, he said he was going to stay. And then it was the 4th or 5th of June where we came up with the, where I came up with the idea for We Are The Geordies. And then it was the day before the Fulham game, which was the first game of the season, we were interviewing Rafa at the training ground. Right. What, so what season was that? The championship season was that 2016-17? Yes, sir. Right, I thought so. Yeah. So, was was the the catalyst for the idea of the documentary? Was it was it all based around you know how the, the fall and the possible rise again, or was it? Did you want to more of a look in the background what was happening with the club? What what was your first ideas of the? Of the, the first idea was to follow away supporters. I was like, why do people travel all around the country? And it's one thing if you're going to like see big clubs like I don't know Liverpool or Manchester, whatever completely different to be going to like Rotherham and uh, who else was there. 
Brentford was in that division, you know, Leeds were there then and whatever. Um, and it was this whole thing of there was, I think there'd been a headline maybe in the Chronicle or something that was, because um, of course, Rafa had come from Real Madrid to us. So it was from, was it the Bernabeu? From the Bernabeu to Burton. That was kind of, that yeah. was what was in my head, going like Rafa going from Bernabeu to six months later, he was going to be, he was with us and then he was going to be playing in Burton Albion, which I think was the smallest ground in the division. And it, that just seemed like quite mad. So there was those two things were the main factors was this could be Rafa's only ever season outside the top flight. And I wanted to follow Newcastle United supporters and kind of dispel some myths. That was always the goal. Mm -hmm. This was, was so this would have been before the, the Sunderland Netflix one, was it? It was. We uh, we filmed it the yeah because they if you rem it was that that was the comedy wasn't it it was uh, George, they, they this is why this is why we hate yeah yeah enjoy Burton away and uh, <laughs> that video with the woman with no teeth um, uh, that's on the flag now <laughs> and, looks a bit like me at the minute <laughs> well, I thought, of was because all the chant was. Um, was it so get the rave on? Oh, remember oh, Jordan oh, Pickford? Oh. The, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that yeah. was that whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I remember saying to some, uh, you've all got Mac and friends, saying to some Mac and friends, you know, careful what you wish for because these six points are all the six points you've got from us with your like six in a row. Woo! Mm -hmm. That's all that's kept you up in the Premier League the last three mm -hmm. seasons, and you're going to be knackered when we're gone. And so it came to pass. And mm -hmm. also that the championship is an absolute beast of a league to try and get promoted from and mm -hmm. that came to pass as well so yeah that, that kind of leads us next on to, to, to me um we sort of next question i suppose yeah when you when you chose the championship season to base a documentary on you give yourself one or two extra matches should we say um the season starts a bit earlier runs it runs a bit later and there's a lot of extra away games on that um were you, were you happy with that challenge were you thinking to yourself uh, a little bit of trepidation going into it well, as um, an idiot, I didn't really put that much thought into it. I knew we had to do 10,000 miles because, again, that was in the Chronicle, 9,750 miles if you went to every game. Um, and we actually followed the Cup as well, although that didn't make it into the film. We got to the quarterfinal of the League Cup that year. We got knocked out to Hull, got knocked out by Hull in the quarterfinals, uh, which was the coldest I've ever been in my entire life in Hull that night. Um, and uh, but we got knocked out really early in the FA Cup from that was Oxford away, uh, mm -hmm. so it was probably over ten thousand miles by the end of the season. Um, but I didn't really go into it thinking, oh my god, we're going to have to do all. To be honest, I thought we were going to have enough money to pay crew and other people were going to be going, but then things didn't quite work out like that, and we ended up having to do a lot more miles than I'd ever planned on. And, and how did you get about the place? Were you, was it just you and your car? Were you, were you using any other modes of transport? What, what was there it There was like all, to... all, all sorts of crazy... Lot, lots, of, lots of car journeys. Um, a few... A couple of times we sent people down. I didn't go down, but a couple of times we sent people down on, uh, like, the buses. So the back page were really good and let us... A couple of times we went down on back page buses. Uh, another time we went with another coach company. I can't remember who they were. A couple of train journeys. Brentford was a train. Um, and actually for the FA Cup game, the Oxford game, James got in a little tiny plane about this big. I refused to get in that plane, so James <laughs> went on that one. It was <laughs> a proper little tiny private plane that was terrifying by all accounts. Indiana Jones-style plane. Yeah. I, I was on a similar plane once when I went to um, um, Amsterdam. And I had propellers on it, and uh, yeah, I, w I was a little bit like, "Oh, I'm getting on that thing there. <laughs> Don't fancy that." Yeah. Yeah. So you know, obviously, this new one, um, the club have very much been involved in it. Um, but when you were doing yours, obviously, the club weren't very forthcoming with with anything, with any information. So, did the club help you in any way, shape, or form, or was it purely just fun? Uh, well, the, cl the, the club were as helpful as we wanted them to be. Like, they could have been involved. I mean, I had a very clear idea from the beginning that I wasn't interested in players. I didn't want to get into fan p 
politics. I didn't want to get into club politics. I wanted to follow fans. Um, and I knew that that would possibly limit its lifespan because we're like in such a celebrity obsessed culture that everybody mm. wants to see the players, everybody wants to see the managers, blah, 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 blah. That didn't interest me. Um, but the club kind of gave us, we didn't actually even want Rafa in the film, to be honest with you. The Rafa thing was a test because like you say, the club had been kind of difficult and not necessarily forthcoming. So they gave us permission to do kind of whatever we wanted. And then Keith Bell, who was one of the executive producers, said, let's test them, ask them if we can have an interview with Rafa. So we did. And they said, yeah, you can have an interview with Rafa. And yeah. so at that point, I was like, right, OK, well, they are committed because they've arranged this interview with Rafa. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in the end, we got three interviews. So we got that one, got one about halfway through the season. And then we got one at the end of the season. Um, right. And they, for the most part, were pretty supportive and pretty helpful. And had we managed to get it out when we were meant to, I mean, the original plan was, like this Amazon one, it was to come out at the start of the next season. Yeah. But we just had a nightmare with investment and, God, rich people are dickheads. That's yeah. like a whole other subject, but rich people are dickheads. <laughs> so we had a big problem that, like the original, I can remember saying to Rafa, um, God, Rafa, look at me, me and Rafa, uh, to <laughs> Rafa Benitez um, in that first interview, you've got to get promoted because I want to have the premier in the premiership or yeah. the premier league. Um, and it's not going to be a red carpet. It's going to be a black carpet. And there was this whole thing that the club were going to get Wendy Taylor, who was the head of media was like, Oh yeah. And we'll get the, the players can do like a guard of honor for the fans coming in and we'll do the premier mm -hmm. at St. James's. And this was all like, this was all the plan. That was what was supposed to happen. But then um, we ran into problems with the investment and the finance and everything got delayed. And then it was just, as you know, Sai, I'm a bloody minded twat. It was my mm -hmm. bloody minded twatishness that got us to finish it. It basically yeah. we just put it on my back like we did with the stag do and dragged it over the finish line. Yeah. What I find really interesting with doing a documentary, so, you know, you mentioned you've done independent films previously, like the stag do. Now, when you're doing a, a movie, you know, you've got your screenplay there, you know how it's going to begin, you know how it's going to end, you know, you, you've got a linear that runs through it. It's all very planned out. Whereas when you're doing a documentary on, documentary on such a thing like sports, you don't know what's going to happen. So from, from your perspective, was there a bit of like, right, are we going to plan it, the document to go this way if we don't have a good season? If we have a good season, are we plan it to go this way? How do you sort of plan for the unplannable, so to speak? Um, well, you can't. My biggest fear was mid-table mediocrity. I was like, even if we get relegated, if we did what Sunderland did, which was kind of plummet two divisions in two seasons... Um, Sorry, I can't help but laugh about that. Um, if, <laughs> oh, let's have a laugh, yeah. <laughs> if, if we were to do that, that would still be drama from the perspective of the fans, uh, from what we were doing. But obviously, probably, probably people wouldn't want to watch it. Um, some people were like, well, if we go up through the playoffs, that would be great. And I was like, no, that's just way too much stress. And let's face yeah. it, we'll bowl, we'll bowl it up because we're Newcastle United. Um and in the end, I couldn't Wembley. have asked. I couldn't have asked for a better end. I mean, the the last the last game of the season was hilarious because, um, we we the club had been dead good all the way through. We could have two media passes. We could do this. We could do. We could pretty much do whatever the hell we wanted. But the last game of the season, there was suddenly loads of press interest, and they started getting quite. I didn't don't want to say difficult, but there was suddenly they were limiting our access because there were suddenly millions of journalists who wanted access, and obviously they're more important than us. So I actually went in on a ticket, and I had I had like I was wired for sound, so I had all these like hidden microphones on me and like sound recording equipment. I was like, if I get searched, I'm not gonna I'll, I'll get thrown out and probably yeah, yeah. banned from the ground. But I had all this sound stuff, and I was filming with my phone. I was in the uh, Gallagher. <clears throat> And I'm trying to capture the end and the sort of the champagne and all that stuff, but from like a fan's point of view, back of the stand. And then my phone's just going ping, 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 because like Hollywood ending, you know, I mean, to win the championship in the yeah. 90th minute of the last game of the season, you know, that's just like Hollywood ending. 
and it was literally I must have got about 200 texts in a sort of 10 minute period which as you know you can't get any text in St James's Park so I still don't know how they were coming through while I was trying to film on my phone but they were yeah, I mean, you couldn't have probably scripted a better ending. I, I know me and Si have got really nice memories of that, that last game in the championship. Amazing. It was Dwight, amazing. Yeah. Well, Dwight Dale had just, had just scored, hadn't he? And he, did, he was doing his celebration, the up-down celebration. And there's a guy behind me, and um, hopefully he watches this one day, but we uh, he, always, he always used to have his headphones in, and he'd listen to the to the game. So he, he was keeping us updated on what was, was happening. The there, game, it? it was Brighton game, wasn't it? Against Aston Villa, wasn't it? It was against Aston Villa, yeah. And uh, well, that guy actually, um, you, the only thing he ever says at the match is, move it, move it. So we always used to sing, I like to move it, move it to him. And he never used to say much to it. But I've got a great video, if I can find that, I'll send you it over. Maybe it was pop it in. Of um, his reaction to when um, when it was uh, Grealish had scored, I believe it was, for Aston Villa. And he didn't say anything. He just went bright red. And he's like, ah, ah. And we were like, what? Have they done it? Have they done it? And just this wave of jubilation went across yeah, the stadium. And what a moment that was. What a moment. If you um, if you ever, if you watch it, if you get a chance to watch it or watch it again, whatever, if you've seen it, watch it again. If you haven't seen it, then watch it. At the end, we were filming... So James was down pit. So James had the press pass. So he was down with Davy Craig, and then somebody else had a press pass with the guys in the Gallagher corner. Davy Craig's in that Leasers corner between the Leasers and the East Stand. And um, so with James is there, kind of filming, and everybody's doing the going up, going down, and going through all the chants. And then there's a girl, girl, a woman, about two thirds of the way on the right hand side, about four rows up pretty young dark haired girl and she's the first person in that section to realize that Brighton have scored and you just see her face just it's like elation this sec this this split second where her face yeah. just lights up in the most magical natural amazing it's it's amazing and now whenever I watch it um that's all I can I'm just waiting for her face to kind of light up it's it's really cool and that was that's kind of one of my favorite uh, things of this film is just watching people's faces. That was really what it was about. Yeah. Speaking of which, where can people watch it? If they're um, in this modern age where if they don't want to particularly buy DVDs, I, like I say, I don't even have a DVD player. Uh, where can people? So it's on. Like... It's on Amazon. It's on Sky Store. Uh, actually, I should have really looked at my royalty statement today before this thing, because um, that came today. Like my my three pound fifty royalties. Um, I'm trying to think where else it is. Uh, Amazon Prime's the best. Well, Amazon's the best place to watch it because I think they I've do got it. A link ready for Amazon, yeah. I've yeah, yeah. They, I think they they do it in five point one surround sound, so you get the kind of the full experience if you. And the sound is like without, you know, kissing my backside about oh my film's this amazing film thing. The sound is the best thing about it. That last game, the sound is if you've got the surround sound, you are yeah. there. You're at the match. It was spent hours and hours and hours doing the sound on that days, in fact. And when we showed it at the cinema, <laughs> Davy Craig said, uh, "He said at one point I was going to turn around and tell somebody to shut up behind me because I thought it was somebody talking, but it was like the sounds of the match because yeah, yeah. we made sure we kind of <laughs> we had like mic. So I had my mics on that I was telling you about, but there was like mics in the corner. There was mics all over the ground. Um, so you actually get like through the thing if you watch it with the surround sound." Do you remember the um was it Burton at home where there was the really bad penalty where they cocked up the penalty decision and they gave the penalty? I, I was talking about that. Me and Kevin were talking about that on here the other week and I couldn't remember which match it was. It was the Matt Ritchie one where Matt, yeah, Matt yeah. Ritchie did it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it was I'm sure it was Burton, but I could be wrong. I can't remember um, which game it was, but I remember the few yeah, roll because everyone was on their feet for the rest of the game after that, and it was but you can hear if you if you watch again if you watch the film with the surround sound you're actually you can actually hear the people like behind where the camera is saying oh I can't believe this and what a load of shite and they've given the they've done so it's actually like being there because you're getting people's conversations around you. Sorry, I'm very handsy. Yeah. All right. Was there a lot of editing you have to do? In... Live that again. Yeah. Yeah, was a lot of editing you have to do in terms with you know some of the maybe unsavory things you might hear in in the uh, in amongst the crowd because imagine if you if you're doing crowd sound um, you know. A lot of the language can be um, coarse, shall we say? <laughs> well, there's a few. I mean, in that one, obviously, there was 
there wasn't much in the way of chance. I think there's only Richie's magic hat. Obviously, yeah. he's got uh, knows a. Overall, it wasn't that bad. I think there's a few. I think there's only maybe two or three fucks in it, and then there's a couple which, if you know the songs, you know they're there. But if you don't know the songs, you really have to struggle to hear them. And we've got mm. a twelve from the BBFC. They had to rate it, um, much like with the stag do. Um, you know, you have to pay the BBFC, and they sit and watch it and tell you what rating they're going to give it. Yeah, and you know the the the, the documentary is all about you see you know the fans going away. Party and attempted to dust the lenses off with it being a European adventure this season. Is it is a party of thinking? Oh, actually, you know, it would be quite that would have that was always again that was always the plan was then it'll be but it was going to be Rafa's Mags conquer Europe. But you know, Rafa went. Uh, everything else is as it is now. You know what? We wouldn't be able to do it now. I mean, from a from a personal point of view, we wouldn't be able to do it. I've got a disabled son who's at an age now where just those kind of things are impossible. But also. You know, the club are in a different league now. They're dealing with Amazon. They don't want to deal with Gobby Zara and Jimmy from Bencham when they can kind of get all the money from, when they can get all of Jeff Bezos' lovely dollar. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's one of those things that we couldn't have done it before when we did it because the technology, part of the impetus was we wanted to have these fan cams. So out like we had a thing on uh, the website where fans could upload footage their footage that they'd taken of like their mates or a uh, crowd celebrating a goal or whatever. And at that point, 2016, it was just when everybody was starting to get like 4K camera phones. So that was, we couldn't have done it before then. And I don't think we could do it now because there's so much, since the pandemic, there's so much more fan content that like, when we were doing it, it was unusual. It was different, certainly in New in the Newcastle space it was different, whereas now everybody's doing it. And then mm -hmm. the other thing as well is obviously the club is a big corporate juggernaut now, whereas then it was Lee Chonley, Lee Marshall, Wendy Taylor, and that was probably about it. So you didn't have to kind of go through like a massive PR department or whatever. Did you ever have any uh, interactions with um, the, 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 man, <laughs> the man of the moment at that time, and, uh, Mr. Mike Ashley himself, or was it... All just did he have like PRs that you would work through? Uh, everything well, because I was involved with um fans group, so I was involved with uh NUFC Fans United, and everything went through um Lee Marshall, who was the supporter liaison officer at that time, and Wendy Taylor, who was the head of media at that time. And I think Wendy really only got involved because of the access to Rafa, otherwise, we probably would have most of it would have just gone through Lee Marshall. Um, then, you know, Wendy left uh, and Lee got promoted and he was head of media. I don't know what his role is now, but I know there was a period where he was like head of media and still the supporter liaison officer and in the Mike Ashley era where he was kind of pretty much running the club single hand. Him and Lee Charney were pretty much running the club single handedly. At least that's so, how it appeared from the outside. Yeah, I think I think it pretty much was. Uh, like a few years previous to when you'd done the film, I'd done some work with... Uh, St. James's, and I'm not going to mention the other companies because it's water under the bridge. But uh, yeah, I was doing some comedy events and whatnot, and, and, and it pretty much was like a, a shoestring of um, the same faces that, that I was dealing with each time. Um, I also got I got really I, I got done over by the club that put me in a financial really tricky position um, with booking acts that they then pulled acts weren't suitable. Uh, well, it was Reginald D. Hunter. It was because of the PFA awards when he said um, he dropped the N bomb, um, mm -hmm. and then they instantly pulled out with a fortnight to go. So that left me um, in a financial situation, um, which wasn't uh, fun. So looking back at that, like that that period where you done the the film, there was no better time really because that was like Rafa coming in was the only like glimmer of hope. It was the only thing. I remember that was the only thing that got me to renew my season ticket mm -hmm. when we went down was the fact that Rafa was going to stay. Um, oh, completely. I mean, I think I think it's still there. You know, so we had so many different versions of this film and the, the beginning was the most difficult bit for us to get exactly how we wanted it to be because we were always toying with, you don't want to give 
too much information to your core audience, Newcastle fans, because they know all this stuff. But if you mm. want to have a broader audience, there's things that you need to say to contextualise stuff. And we were never too sure where to go. And there was one version, and I'm not sure if it's in the final version because it's ages since I've watched it, but where George Culkin had this beautiful quote I found online. Um, and I can't remember if we left it in the opening credits or not, which is Newcastle United, because obviously this is peak Mike Ashley era, was mm. Newcastle United is a monument to the death of hope. Oh and I was like, that is just so, it's so bleak and so, so horrendous, but so true. Yeah. I mean, it was a bleak time <laughs> when that you know when we got relegated and and ironically like you said the last game of the season we'd, we'd beaten Tottenham five one and and you know I remember being full of um, you know what could have been, um, mm. but you know to to come straight back up in the in the first attempt was was brilliant that's just what we needed. Now I know you mentioned you know you had a really um, <clears throat> cold night in Hull, which I imagine was probably one of the moments where you thought, oh, God, why, why am I why am I doing this? Um, did you have any moments where you thought to yourself, actually, do you know what it is? This is the reason why I'm doing it. Any standout moments from away games where you thought, yeah, this is this is great. Yeah, Brentford away. Brentford away was really that was the first again because everything was um, arse backwards. As in, we came up with the idea and we started making it before we had all the money, before we had all the permissions, before everything was lined up. We didn't get permission to go into an away game until Brentford, which was January. So there's like loads of footage from outside games and there's fan camera footage from inside games, but us actually being inside, the first one was Brentford. And it was amazing because that was the first time you actually go, I can see how this is going to work really well now as a film. Mm. Um, That was really a special um, match. And I was actually really chuffed when they got promoted because they were so, they were really, like I say, they were the first club to let us go in. Um, the because the um, championship is part of the football league, there's like 72 clubs that you kind of, I don't want to say you need to get permission from all of them, but they kind of to get them to all agree, it was just easier to go to them individually. So we never got like an edict from the championship saying, yes, you can do this. It was always just talk to each club. And most of them kept saying no. Um, Brighton said no, so fuck them. I'm glad we took their players and I'm Dan Byrne and bloody what's his face. And uh, pop them the, to the league. <laughs> yeah, exactly. League. Exactly. Because they, they wouldn't <laughs> let we in so they can get the fuck of the fired Chris Hutton. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess that's a, a, a fuck you to Brighton. Yeah. <laughs> no, so well, how, how would you sell this film now? To, obviously, with the, the big Amazon documentary, everyone's in the Newcastle fan space is talking about it. Um, how would you how would you sell this now? Is it uh, to like kind of wet your whistle for that uh, to relive it's the prequel? The... It's right. the prequel. <laughs> um, it, for me, I think why 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 I think people should watch it if they haven't already watched it is it's and watch it before the Amazon one is it's great to see how far we've come. That to me mm. is is like the testament to. As much as it was hellish that we had to wait so long for the takeover to happen, it's a real testament to the new owners, the amount of change they've managed to create in such a short space of time. I mean, what were we like? No wins in 17 games or something when they took over. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much halfway through the season, wasn't it? Yeah. Maybe it wasn't 17 games. Maybe it was like, excuse me, 13 games. But it was like... It was near enough halfway before uh, how came in, yeah. Yeah, 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 we didn't win in the first fourteen. That was wasn't the first win against Burnley. I want to say, or was that a, was that a draw, one one draw? It was Eddie Howe's the first win. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was the oh. first win, and it, yeah, the, the turnaround was in such a you know such a, a short period of time that yeah, it, it, I get what you're saying. Watching a documentary like that, it, it it feels like it was like a million years ago because of mm-hmm. the fortunes of the club at the moment. But when you think back about it, it wasn't that long ago when we we're, were, were literally in that predicament. I know, yeah. and the real the, this is this is like a personal thing, and I'm not. This is just a me thing, but like Wrexham getting promoted with the Wrexham documentary, and actually even us getting into the top four. They now, because there was a period where we were the only documentary that had followed a team through a season where the team had had success. 
Like, because yeah. obviously the Mackhams got relegated, then didn't make it back up. I mean, that losing in the playoffs was hilarious. That <laughs> still makes me laugh. And it, the, do you know the gutting thing? I mean, again, not to kiss me or not, but the really gutting thing is at, at Christmas that year where they lost in the playoffs, I had actually sent a tweet to Sky Bet and said, what odds will you give me for the Mackhams losing in the playoffs to Charlton? And they're like, oh, you've got to message these people. And I didn't do it. I got distracted. And yeah. that's what happened. I'm like, how much money would I have won? What would the odds have been? Yeah. Put that bet on in December for an event in May. That would have been so cool. But I didn't yeah. do it. So I've only got myself to blame. But yeah, so now, I mean, obviously we succeeded in that we finished fourth and made the Champions League. And Wrexham getting promoted this year meant they succeeded. But prior to that, it was only us. It was like, mm-hmm. that was kind of, it was cool to actually have that ending. Yeah. Well, I know we said we weren't going to talk too much about. Sorry, been, one side. There's been a spate of them since, like, since you've done yours. Uh, all the Amazons, um, all or nothing. Mm-hmm. The Sun that I die one, um, and now the Newcastle one. Mm-hmm. The Wrexham. The Wrexham one, yeah, on Disney, yeah. And there's the Leeds. There's the Leeds one from when uh, what's his face Bielsa was there, but they yeah. didn't get they didn't get promoted again. So, sorry, go on. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, I know we're not going to touch too much on the um, the, the modern stuff, but we're, we're coming towards the beginning of the season now and we can't have you on without getting your predictions. What, what, where, where do you think Newcastle's going to finish this season? What do you see? Uh, what's your hopes and what's your predictions? I think we'll make Champions League again. Um, yeah. I think Bruno is going to... I just I'm in love with Bruno. I think he's kind of... <laughs> Quite possibly the best player I've ever seen in black and white. Just yeah. all, all, all is all around game is so amazing. Um, and I actually think we'll do all right in Europe this year. I don't think we'll. I think we'll get to the. Is it like? A, is there two league stages and then a knockout stage? I think we'll make it to the knockouts. Oh yeah, yeah. There's like the league and then the knockout. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the last. Is this the last one before they change the format? The Premier League, the Champions League. Sorry, I think so. As well. I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah, and I think Isak might be top scorer. I hope you're right. I hope, I hope you're correct. Is it, yeah. is it called the Golden Boot in the Premier League? See, I'm so out of touch. What you mean the, <laughs> the league's top scorer? Yeah, I think the league's top scorer. Oh, I thought you meant Newcastle's. I no, think I think I think Harland will probably have a say in that end if Harry Kane yeah, stays, possibly. But but yeah, no. Harry Kane, Harry Kane will go, and Harry then we're going to yeah. And then we're going to all laugh at Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to laugh at Spurs, and anyways, and I, and I often do. So I loves to watch the six one. I watched it last night. Repeatedly. I watched it last <laughs> night again. The first twenty minutes, six one. Can't stop watching it uh, because that um, that was that is my highlight of, of being a Newcastle fan. Even though all the other stuff when I was younger, of, of, shall I say, of recent times, that is my highlight. That um, that six one Tottenham. But before that, it was the final game of the Championship season. Um, yeah, that was so. I, I'm gonna uh, watch it again, even though I've got the DVD. I'm gonna go on Amazon and get it on Amazon so I can watch it uh, properly. Do um, that before the price goes up. Once everybody starts watching it after this goes out, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll look, it's only a couple of quid as well, it's only a few quid to watch. So, um, so all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the link in the uh, description of this video so everyone can go over to Amazon um, and get it watched. Um, just to wet your appetite before. The, uh, the the Amazon one comes out on the eleventh, so you still got a uh, good week and a half to watch. And the other thing you can do if you're a real loser like me, I mean, this is what I did. So you know, if you get your two pizzas from ASDA, you get two mm-hmm. pizzas from ASDA and a bottle of pop and a voucher for the Sky Store for like six quid. I used my voucher for the Sky Store to buy my film. I was like, well, that's just another way of me getting some money. Pays <laughs> <laughs> for the pizzas. <laughs> right. Well, 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 I, I'll mention that in the comments. That, um, if people have got any free credits for the Sky Store, um, there'll probably be loads of ways they can do it. Let's get everyone to spend that money or that free credits and get this bought and get some more money into it. Um, yes, yeah. that would Excellent. be very nice. Brilliant. Um, well, Zora, thank you very much for joining us. No work. worries. Thanks very much uh, for uh, inviting me on your show. No bother. Um, like I say, we'll put all the links below. Um, we'll put a link to your Twitter where people can go and keep up with your ramblings. If there's choose. too many, there's too many of them. You don't want to follow me on Twitter. I'm a real <laughs> no, dickhead. No bother. Well, we'll just put a link to the Amazon. 
Queen. <laughs> all right, Sora. We will speak to you take soon. Care. And take care. Thank See you, later. Sora. Bye, Bye lads. Bye. Bye. That was good. It was. Yeah, I'm going to put that. a link um, in the comments. So, Zoria, you can just leave studio if you want, because we're going to talk now. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> feel free to stay and watch. We'll just, be, we'll just be rambling for the next hour. <laughs> so, Kevin, news. Yes, news, news. Um... News is, well, apparently Har Harrison Ashby has been spotted in Swansea. Uh, according to someone's uh, matched his tattoo against a, a really a, a cut picture of a, a Swansea team uh, player training, and they went that he's there. So there's that. Oh, um, so it wasn't what it was a train. It wasn't like in Weatherspoons or, no, or any other training, training ground. place for that for that it matter. Was a training ground. Um, and what's that? Um, or oh, who's the player we've been linked with again? Well, I've had my finger off the pulse a little bit, Simon. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I only just found out that uh, Manchester United were in for the CC, the centre back or after. Um, he didn't. He went. To, um, he went to Chelsea, didn't he? Did he? Oh, well, there you go. That's that's yeah. how that's how far off. So <laughs> far, my finger is off the yeah, pulse. Oh, I've got remember the name. Uh, it's a midfielder, and it's someone who's yeah decent, but I don't think we need any more midfielders. Um, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, but the Livermore talk. Bumbles on. Uh, I, I really don't want to pay more than thirty million for Livermento. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't personally would have, would have rather kept Ashby. I think he looked cracking during the preseason. Well, he, he did. There was a few players that looked good during the preseason. So let's start there. Um, I mean, since we last spoke, there's there's there was the Chelsea game, and I think the big standout from the Chelsea game is something we definitely need to be talking about. And it's the player who's on everybody's lips at Lewis the moment. Miley. No, no, not Lewis Miley. Anderson. Anderson. I mean, Miley as well. Miley as well. Miley as well. Yeah, Miley as well. yeah they're, 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 the two of them were, were, uh, were the two standouts for me in all of preseason. Mm -hmm. The Miley, two of them were, were both standout players. Um, and Eddie Howe has stated that Miley will not be going anywhere this season. This is exactly we what we're talking about. About maybe he's going out on loan. You were saying maybe he's League One, and I was saying no, a Championship. But apparently, Eddie Howe thinks he's ready to stay. And I'm pleased because we did also have the conversation as well, as as we often do, and, and we can with when you've got a good coach. If is sometimes is it better for a player to stay at the club and be mm -hmm. under that coach? And and I mean, the answer for me is yes because of Anderson. Uh, I mean. Mm -hmm. Look at look at what he's um, what 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 he's looking like at the moment. It, it, you know, for me, um, that you know, I remember the preseason last season, and he looked all right. And we were having a similar yeah. conversation, like we're having about Lewis Miley. Now, you know, if you're Anderson, you know, you're knocking the door and saying, well, "Hang on a second, how can they not pick us? How can they not pick yeah. us?" So, what I want to ask you is, for you, does Anderson start this game against Aston Villa? I, I literally don't know because. I'm looking at the midfield options we've got now. We've got obviously we haven't seen Willock as, as Willock's had it has a knock, hasn't he? Must have must have had a knock. Well, he, seen Willick. he got injured at the end of last season, didn't yeah, he? In the last game. game. So if we take Willock and Longstaff out of the equation, then what you would think the lineup we would go with would be um Bruno, Joe Linton, and Tunali to replace Longstaff, but too Lally doesn't look Premier League ready compared to the way Anderson looked against Premier League rivals during this summer series. Anderson looks strong. He looks mm -hmm. really strong. I was saying to you, I think it was towards the end of last season, there was there was a picture, you know, when they have the um you know when they have the, the winner game and they have the picture and the mm -hmm. in the, the and and he had, and he had his top off and obviously I was having a bit of a look and mm -hmm. uh, he looked he looked really hench. And mm -hmm. I was looking, I was like, Fuck, man, he's getting big, like he's getting big, Anderson. Now, when he scored, especially the second goal against Brighton, really strong, like oh, really, he was really, really strong. strong. Yeah. Really, but really Eddie strong. Howe said, We're doing the fitness testing, Anderson was uh, the fittest team in the league, and he also went, and that was by some way, I might add. Yeah, he was the fittest one on, on return. 
and but not you know, just the fittest. He, went, he, went, he was the fittest by some margins. Because, you know, he's at an age now where, you know, when I was his age, I was wanting to go to Magaluf and, you know, Falaraki and, and go out and party. He's mm. used his summer to keep going, hasn't he? Yeah. He's used his summer to keep going. And it's shown. It's really shown. Now, for me, the that two players... Goal, that, that, final goal, that final goal against Brighton, just to, on the, the, it was the last kick of the ball. It was the last mm. kick of the ball. And just to show that much energy to burst through. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That late on in the game. Yeah, he's, he's got to be a competitor at the start, hasn't he? And he's got two feet as well, which I like yeah. to see. He, he's not worse than one foot left football, has Well, I mean, Miggy's very one-footed and he gets... He gets oh, yeah, he's oh, so his daughter. Very good. Um, but yeah, no, Miggy, Miggy's only got a left foot, hasn't he? And that's why a lot of the times he has to cut inside or he has to come back on himself or, you know, if he's shooting, it's always from the right-hand side in with his yeah. left. Um, when you've got somebody who's got both feet, it makes him just so, far more versatile. And he, and he showed that in the preseason. So for me, um, Eddie, Eddie Howe's got a bit of a headache for that Aston Villa game because how can you turn somebody, turn around to somebody, and uh, especially if he has another good game at the weekend in the Cellar mm-hmm. Cup, and turn around and say, sorry, well, I'm not starting you, when when you've probably been the player, not not one of the better players, mm-hmm. the player of the preseason. So I think he probably does start in the Aston Villa game, and I've heard <laughs> I've heard people, you know, given like the likes of Paul Gascoigne a name in the in, in the same mm-hmm. sentence as uh, Anderson. Yeah. Look, he's a, he's a far way off that, but you know, if 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 at the if at his age he's already been you know mentioned alongside those players, we've got an exciting um, exciting future ahead of us. Yeah. Now another player I think's probably working the way into that starting lineup as well. And we mentioned a bit in the last game and continues to play well. Anthony Gordon. Mm-hmm. What yeah. do you think? Does he does he get in your starting lineup on the first game? It depends where he's played. Because I, I, I would start Harvey Barnes. And it just, it just depends to do, do put uh, one on the left, one on the right. But then where does where does Isaac come in? Like it's I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I, there's, there's too many options. <laughs> the, the, tell you, the only place where we haven't got too many options is defence, because if Shaw is going to be out, who've we got coming for Shaw? What did you think of Lascelles? I, I think Lascelles has been fine whenever he's been called upon. Mm-hmm. Me too. Well, I, Me still, too. I do still think we need um, more, more defensive cover. Yeah, we need a centre back and a left back. Hundred yeah. percent. We need. A, I mean, we've been we've been saying we need a left back, and everybody's been saying the whole world can see we need a left back. Now, you know, if, if you get a left back in, that brings big Dan Byrne in in for cover for centre back, um, and you start looking a bit stronger in there. Whereas at the moment, I mean, who who are you going to play at left back? You've only got Dan Byrne to play at left back. Target. Target, yeah, you've got target, but do, do you start target ahead of Dan Byrne at the moment? No, probably not. I think not. you look good in pre season. Yeah, I don't know. I think you look good in pre season. You looked all right. You looked all right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm. But we've never once played a full strength squad, which is, um, mm-hmm. is that just to not give anything away to Unai Emery? Is it, is it, is it specifically for that, do you think? Or do you think we'll see it in the next two against uh, Villarreal and Fiorentina that we're playing? No, I think we'll see a similar thing to what we saw in the um, in the over in America. I see. I think you'll see two teams that are very much mixed. I don't think you'll see the starting eleven in one game, and then like a, a sort of backup team in the other. I think you'll definitely mix them around. And I think he did in a, in a similar tournament before the beginning of last season. Um, could be a couple of reasons for that. You know, if you bought a ticket for only one day, you know, you, you, you want to be able to see some of the top players on each one. But I think it probably goes a little bit deeper than that. Is in, yeah, I don't think he wants to give much away. He's probably got a bit of an idea of, of what system he wants to play. And I'm sure behind yeah. closed doors, he'll be practicing that, those systems with what he believes is going to be the starting 11. But why, why give the opposition any kind of insight? So, yeah, I think it, you're probably right, Sam. Yeah, I just don't think we're desperate for any more attacking players. I don't think we are. I think we've got an abundance right now. We have. I mean, you never say no. You know, if if if, if somebody oh, suddenly no, came but... through the door, you know what I mean. You'd be like, oh yeah, thank you very well, much. I'd rather. I think you should. I'd rather focus on 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 defensive. Do you know what I mean? On on that back four, focus on strengthening that back four, 
uh, because there's, I know he likes to keep a back four, but that's a lot of games to try and keep a back four for a for an entire season across uh, league, domestic cups, FA League Cup, and then Champions League. That's a lot of games. Yeah, that, it is a lot of games. Alex Murphy looked really good as well. Robocop. He did, and, yeah. And, and um, the when name the, of the character of Robocop. Alex yes, Murphy. I know. Very good. Um, they got him from Ireland, didn't they? Over in Ireland. Um, snapped yeah. him up. And he showed in the um, in the American games why that was. Why that was, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, you know, there was a lot of players from the youth youth team who didn't look out of place. No, they didn't. And it, it's kind of went under the radar how the way the way that they've been kind of trying to bolster this this sort of um youth the youth team. Yeah. Um you know we've got two out on loan we've got um that Minta and uh, yeah. the young Australian lad. Um they're both Grand out on Paul. loan. Grand Qual. They're both out on loan with we Getting that Murphy from Ireland, you've got Anderson coming through, you've got the two Miley brothers coming through. See the young lad? Striker. Oh, this is why I need notes. <laughs> we don't prepare, Sai. Uh, it's me memory, the memory shopping. Oh, I bought, um, so I've got these Hypersune A for memory, Lion's Mane Mushroom Extract Focus for memory, and I've got these called Brahma. Brahma, these are all things I take every day to try and improve my memory. So I'm worried I'm getting onset of dementia. Just keep forgetting to take them. <laughs> I don't actually have them because they're, they're there, they're right next to us. And along with all, I've got this slow, I've just got so many vitamins and, and minerals. Uh, yeah. So One more thing I'd like to mention before. Go on. No, no, go on. You're gone. It was about the, I know you said you haven't been clued in and watching. I just can't help it because, um, I mean, they're watching stuff about UFOs, which is huge. I don't know why the world isn't talking about it. It's like, but anyway, I mean, I watch stuff about UFOs, um, or I'm watching football stuff on YouTube. That's all I watch. I don't watch anything else. Um, so I kind of still stay, um, keep your finger on the pulse as to what's going on. And did you hear the whole ticket fiasco yesterday? Um, yeah, they, they, they put it right pretty quickly, though, they didn't they? The, the, the backtrack to Dane, so, which is good, which is fair. The listening. Is, yeah, the listen. Yeah, so, I mean it was it was a bit of a bit of a uh, bit of a known goal, and you know, I, you know, it's easy for me, somebody who's got a season ticket, to look back and, to look back and go, oh, what are you whinging about? What are you moaning about? You I'm know what same. I mean? <laughs> but when if I when I think about it, yeah, you know, if it was me, there's a lot of difference between forty four pound and seventy four pound, uh, especially you know if if met, met, what are you going in for two tickets? All of a sudden, that's like one hundred and fifty quid. Boom. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, you should have you should have the option of what you're going to spend. Really, yeah, you should, you should, and I think that's what they've, they've they've readdressed. But what I will say is, I don't like poverty in things being used to target things that are unnecessary. I, I want to explain this. So I'm very um, old school left, not this new left. Old school left, old school liberal. Um, do you know what I mean? I'm very much for the working man and all that. Um, and I think this outrage and that should should be targeted in one place, one place only. That is the government. Um, I think that's where it should be outraged. Not trying to say to the club, oh, well, some people can't afford to put food on the table. How are they going to afford that extra 30 quid for a ticket? To be fair, look, if you can't put, afford to put food on your table, you, you don't go to the match. When I first had my first child, we were uh, skinned and I didn't have a season ticket. I didn't have a season ticket until she was about five because I just couldn't afford it. New parents, first time, do you know what I mean? Getting that. So it's just unfortunate that, that, that football is always going to be a luxury. Um, and it always has been, as long as I've been alive. Even in the 90s, it was still a luxury. Do you know what I mean? It, was, it still wasn't cheap to go to a football game. So now I'm not saying that that, that, that justifies um, the... the saying, all right, well, you're either going to pay 40 or you're going to pay 70 and you won't know which until the day because that's not on, because that, that that could make a difference. But I don't I don't like the thing of, um, of, of, of just of Target and all the anguish and that it's somehow the football club's fault that people are, are poor. Do you know what I mean? I have to think it should be targeted. At I get that. what you're saying. Uh, yeah, people, should have, people should be in a position where if they are working, they have um, expenditure and they can afford to do luxury things, not worry about 
food, and that boils down to the government, and that boils down to how they how they then police um, rogue uh, companies in zero hour wages, uh, zero hour contracts, and things like that. That's where that's where that anger should should be aimed to, in my perspective. And, and tax exemptions. Yeah, yeah. just also all, everything everything that should be addressed before we start going about the, the extra thirty quid of a ticket price. And it is, it is, you know, it is. It, I mean, you know, we we live on normal means. <clears throat> you know, I get a, a normal wage, and you know, it, it does cost a bit for us to go and watch Newcastle United. Um, you know, I've got a hundred pound coming up for my season ticket this month on the twenty fifth. There's another hundred. Champions League on this month. Yeah. So well, there's a season. I do the direct debit for my season ticket, and then on the twenty fifth, we've got the two Champions League, mm -hmm. and then there was a Champions League last seat, last month last week. Is there? Sorry last month as well mm -hmm. and it is it's difficult and, and you've, you've got to sort of um pull back on other things and 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 i get it is it is it's hard it's a lot of money um so i can see both sides of the argument you know it was it was wrong for them not to give them the choice uh yeah. to 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 see you know to to what you wanted to pay like when we went into the ballot you know you you, you, you at least had an for the cup final at least had an option to say right well this is my preferred one then if i can't get one in there i'll get one at this price range and that price range yeah the option was there i was lucky, um, I was lucky enough not to have to go into ballot um which would i would don't think i would have been able to take the stress I don't think it was stressful i know it was i was on the phone with you most of the time uh, and i don't think i could i don't think i could have took that stress um and i like the fact that they've made it clearer now and they've went right to do this you're going to need to go to all the all the, the cup games and that's that's your option. And to me, that's fair. I didn't think it was fair last time that people who'd never been to a cup game could still get tickets to the final above season ticket holders who had maybe been to two cup games. I didn't think that was fair. Mm -hmm. But that's just yeah. And right, you it know, divides, it divides the fan base between you know what I mean. I I could. People could say that I'm just being, oh, it's all right for you, Jack, kind of thing, which I suppose I am in a way because I'm, I have got my season ticket and I've got everything paid for and blah blah blah. Got to play but, devil's advocate as well. I didn't complain when they were giving away season tickets after I paid for mine neither. You know what I mean? I paid. Yeah, for, yeah. I paid for a full season season ticket, which was, nearly, era, yeah. which was nearly six hundred uh, quid. And then halfway through the season, decided they were going to give ten thousand or whatever it was away for free. But I didn't. You, you pay your money, you make your choice. You know what I mean. Yeah. I would rather have people in the ground, but I, I, I can't really remember much of an outrage about that. Now it must it must be what? shit if you want to go to the match. And I can understand people want to go to the match. We're playing good football. It's more appealing. It's a more appealing product. But if that comes, you know, more of a demand for tickets. Mm -hmm. But not everybody can go. That's an unfortunate thing. So, the the fact that they brought out this membership, one, you know, I, I saw one or two people saying, "Oh, well, <laughs> the membership seems a bit a bit of a rip off selling that many memberships for X amount of tickets." Nobody, nobody, nobody made this anybody do it. You don't mm -hmm. have to do it. And if you've got a membership, it just means one, you, you, you give them something towards the club, which helps with FFP. Um, Fair enough, on the grand scheme of things, it's not going to be a massive amount. I was trying yeah. to figure out some sort of maths around it the other day, and it doesn't work out a massive amount, to be honest with you. What? But it, it's, at the same time, you know, you've got these international memberships. Um, I like it too. Can you remember the Magpie fan club? From vaguely, years ago? vaguely, yeah. People used to pay into that, you know, and it, it means you remember something, and it gives you, and it means you're in with a shout. It means you've got your Magpie mover for the Still many. Still the same thing now, I. Uh, well, you used to get it free with your season ticket. No, it that's not free anymore. Like, hasn't been for the last few years. You, know? you um, can you can rent out Shira's bar for free once. You what? You can rent out Shira's bar for free with your um, membership and your season ticket. Did you know that? Yeah. Once uh, I think it's once or up to twice a season. Probably dependent on the event, like so. If you're on yeah. like a birthday party or something like that, maybe it's a cheeky little all the pies night. Yeah, maybe, maybe, sorry. For for uh, me and the uh, you and the uh, thirty people that watch, exactly. <laughs> more than enough for a party. Uh, no, but it's good that they backtracked anyway. They they done. They put it right. They listened to the put it right. Yeah, I mean, not every, people still won't think it's right, but that's just in the way it is. It's just the way it is. Um, well, so, wait, sorry, go on. Oh, no, no, I was about well, getting ready to wrap up. You go on. Well, just before we do wrap up, I just want to just spend a quick couple of minutes on this. I mentioned Wazara, and I was just interested in what your thoughts were as well. 
because we might get in depth about it because we've got a couple of games coming up for the next one. Mm -hmm. Where we're going to finish, what's what's the season going to bring forward? Because I've got a couple of thoughts on this. Uh -huh. I'm interested to see what yours are. I think we're going to finish fifth, which, which will be enough to qualify for the Champions League. I just think Liverpool and Chelsea are going to pick up form. Chelsea more so because they haven't got any um, Euro competitions to play in. I think Villa will be there, but I think they'll, they'll be it'll be too much for too much of an ask for them this season because of the extra matches. Um, even though I am gutted, and I've said this before, that they got DRB. I think DRB is going to be an immense player, um, and I think they're going to be a scary prospect for loads of teams. Um, but fifth, I'm going to go for, and I'm going to say we are going to get a cup lift a cup whether that be league cup fa cup or champions league oh oof. Oof. bold which. i know bold um, i can see we're going really far in the champions league put it that way i can see we're going really far i think we're going to finish fourth again i honestly think we're going to finish fourth again so and, and do you know what is it's great and you know i love this we're, we're not being written off as in completely written off we're, we're still in the front but it doesn't mm -hmm. matter which outlet you go to whether it's a fan channel of another of another team whether it's um maybe it's a, a sporting company that goes on the radio whether it's videos that are being put out by sky by these um, so-called experts mm -hmm. nobody's no, everybody's saying the same thing too many games um that you know that they haven't yeah. got the depth these other teams are going to come back again the writing were off again they all writing more off a bit yeah. and that's exactly what we need that's exactly what we want and that when we were written off last season and uh, i think i said top six last season before mm. before ball was kicked i said we'll finish within the top six um if if everybody was turned around and going oh do you know what isn't it cassie united They'll be pushing towards the top again this season. I'd be a little bit more worried because I'd think to myself, mm -hmm. oh, there's going to be that attitude when the when they come up against where of like, oh, watch out for these, watch out for these. I think there'll still be teams thinking, right, we can go here and we can win today. And when I've seen work, when I've seen work um playing pre-season, I know you can't take a massive a lot out of it. We just seem to be clicking really nicely up front. Defensively, maybe it's not as much. So I'd like to see two extra players through the door and both of them be from a defensive point of view. If yeah. we do get them through the door, I think we're nailed on for top four. Oh, I wouldn't say nailed on. I just look at like Chelsea. There's rumours today that they're, they're going to swap Lukaku for Blahalovic. I oh, you say his name, which is oh, and they've already got Unkunku. I think they're going to. I think they're going to be going to come good. Um, Tottenham Mick Jackson, been, Mick Jackson impresses us so. all. Yeah, 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 it has. The I just think they're gonna think they're gonna do well. It just depends with Tottenham. Um mm -hmm. if Harry Kane goes, they're not gonna finish in the top mm -hmm. eight. They're just not. They're just not. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Everyone's seeing Chelsea. I I, I had Chelsea down as fifth. Uh, when I was trying to make a prediction beforehand. Yeah, and Kunku, he may um, have a say that, like I say, Mick Jackson isn't bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. he, could, he could have a thriller of a series uh, season. Yeah, that that could be that could be a game changer, but I don't think we're done in the market yet. I really don't think no, we're, we're not. The market. We're not, we're not. Um, but no, yeah, we you're going fifth, I'm going fourth. Right. Good, no bother. Um, Right, we're going to come to our mark where um, StreamYard goes, no more, you have to pay me more money. And I'm not paying more money. Um, so all I will say is um, if you've liked the video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe below. Comments below about uh, your predictions of where we're going to finish this season. And I will also put a link to where the Jordies go get it watched to something to wet your air whistle before the 11th when uh, the Amazon documentary launches a day before the new season. Oh, it's going to be a canny weekend, isn't it? It's going to be an exciting weekend. I'm looking forward to it already. We've got domestic, uh, the Champions Championship and that starting this weekend. I've got the Charity Shield. We've got Newcastle's Remainer Friendlies. It's all happening. With football's back. And we're back. Uh, and we'll see you, see you next time. Now, fuck off. Come on.